There have been some spectacular technological advances in the last 10-15 years, and smartphones have been at the forefront of that progression. Since 2007, we've seen the world completely change, as everyone now walks around with an internet-capable computer in their pocket at all times, and the ability to be fully connected 24-7. But not every single smartphone has been a hit. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're doing something just a little bit different, going through the top 10 worst smartphone disasters of all time, and uh, not actually in any particular order. They're all a mess in their own right. Before we get into this, make sure you go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech. I'd really appreciate it, and I'm working on some big projects right now, so you know, you can keep up with that. And hey, I also have cute pictures of my dog sometimes on there. So that's at 91 underscore tech. Thank you. And with that out of the way, let's get right into this. This is going to be a collector's item. Over the weekend, a six-year-old boy in New York was rushed to the hospital with burns. This phone, which got rave reviews, it began to be reports that some of them were overheating and even catching fire. Now to that stunning recall. Well, there could be more trouble ahead for Samsung. The company says sparking as many as 35 reported fires. To start this off, I don't think there's any better example than the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, which bombed hard, literally. It was more or less an actual bomb that would explode seemingly at random, even fully powered down, which resulted in them being recalled completely and discontinued shortly after that. Most of you probably know about this one. To this day, haters of Samsung won't let you forget, and frankly, neither should they. However, the truth is the Note 7 exploding wasn't as common as it was made out to be, but it was still much too common to be safe. From what I understand, and the spacing inside the phone was just too tight, which would cause the battery to crimp and short circuit and, you know, explode. Samsung did take responsibility for the whole fiasco to their credit, but it's insane it got through the initial quality control testings in the first place. It's funny because when the Note 7 came out, it was immediately praised and beloved by reviewers. It was a blast to use with its big, beautiful screen and modern design. Luckily, the upcoming Galaxy S8 would improve the Galaxy line drastically, and the Note 8 was a success. So while the Note 7 may have looked awesome, Awesome to some, I think most would rather not have a phone that could blow off your legs at any moment, making it definitely one of the worst smartphone disasters of all time, if not the worst. This is the Kyocera Echo from Sprint, the first dual touchscreen smartphone. Two's better than one. Ask Double Dream Hands Man, who just released his latest tour de force, Double Dream Feet. With two screens, watch it and email it. Text it and tweet it. Let's make this masterpiece just as famous, twice as fast. And together, we can give One Hit Wonders a second life. The Echo Smartphone, only from Sprint. So let's talk about a phone you may not have ever even heard of, the Kyocera Echo. In this world of all new folding phones, it may surprise you to hear it's actually been done before, and the Echo did it back in 2011. It had two 3.5 inch displays that could be used in essentially four different positions. Tablet mode, where you kind of have both screens together, which makes it basically a 4.7 inch phone, which would have been very big for 2011. There was the optimized mode, where each screen shows a different part of the application. So this is something that worked with applications that were made specifically for it, like like email, where the top screen would show the email message and the bottom might show your inbox. There's simultask mode, where you could essentially use both screens independently of each other to run apps. And then single screen mode, where you can conceal the bottom screen. So as limited as this was, it was kind of like the current Galaxy Fold, or even more so like that LG phone that had that second screen attachment, or maybe the Surface Duo, although it folds in a pretty unique fashion. Regardless, this phone was a complete disaster. There was hardly any optimized software made for it, the hardware wasn't powerful enough to do anything, the battery couldn't properly power two screens, the thick hinge in the middle made it look awkward, the phone is super cool, but I sure wouldn't want to use it today. Even in 2011, it was a pretty awful experience, which of course makes it one of the most disastrous phones ever made, although hey, I'll give it props for being a cool concept. The iPhone 5C is in many ways the distillation of what people love about the iPhone 5. It's simpler, more essential, yet it's more capable and certainly more colorful. 
The Echo's biggest sin is that it tried too hard and ultimately flopped. So let's take a look at a phone that didn't try hard enough, the 2013 iPhone 5C. This phone was essentially the iPhone 5, but with polycarbonate plastic in various colors, which was completely new to the iPhone line. This might have been okay, but it was only about $100 less than the much better and much more innovative iPhone 5S, a phone that brought Touch ID and a 64-bit architecture for the first time, resulting in getting two extra full iOS versions over the 5C in the long run. The 5C wasn't a bad phone, but it was mediocre, and while it sold okay, it didn't even come close to meeting Apple's sky-high standards. And then, of course, they would sell the 8GB models for cheap, which were truly terrifying, as you can maybe take, like, three pictures before running out of space. All in all, as much as I personally love the 5C, because I actually used it back when I was younger for a while, there's no doubt that, at least in terms of Apple, it's a disaster. Introducing the Thunderbolt by HTC. Immense power, scorching speed. The first phone strong enough to run on the fastest, most advanced 4G network in America. So how about another old phone, the HTC Thunderbolt? Now this is actually a pretty weird one. It was the first 4G LTE smartphone pushed out by the Verizon Wireless Network and launched in early 2011. For perspective, close to two years before iPhones would get 4G in late 2012. With all the talk of 5G and smartphones nowadays, let's not forget 4G was a big deal for the time too, as it was a huge step up. But unfortunately, this phone was not a very good way to represent it. It didn't help, there was quite a lot of hype for the phone and the pre-orders were handled very poorly. But as soon as people got their phones, the complaints started rolling in. Apparently Skype was removed just before release for some reason, and then there was the classic issues of short battery life, frequent rebooting, and a lack of consistent software updates. There was also a lot of bloatware, even for a 2011 Android phone, which uh, generally had a lot of bloatware anyways. I mentioned the bad battery, but I should just emphasize how bad it was. Because of the 4G usage, this phone would be lucky to get you a few hours on a single charge, which meant either you needed to keep a charger with you at all times, or a spare internal battery. And hey, at least this was the days when you could pop off the bat quickly, throw in a new battery, kind of neat. Ultimately, this was a tragically mediocre phone that was way too overhyped and didn't even come close to meeting expectations. One new smartphone maker in India is getting lots of attention this week for introducing an Android phone that only costs about four dollars. Freedom 251 smartphone is a landmark moment in the telecom space. At a price of just 251 rupees or four US dollars, Number five, one of the best things about living in North America is the freedom to do more or less whatever we want. Heck, my phone carrier up in Canada is even called Freedom Mobile. Not that most places overseas are bad by any means. And in fact, an Indian company wanted to make a phone for the masses called the Freedom 251, and it looked way too good to be true. It was an actual smartphone for $4. Ringing Bells Private Limited put up the Freedom 251 for pre-sale between the 18th and 21st of February 2016. The phone sucked, but it was also $4. We're talking a single gig of RAM, pretty garbage tier specs, 8 gigs of storage, 3G networking, a 3.2 megapixel camera, but it was a touchscreen phone for $4. This was a seemingly killer deal, especially for those in India who normally wouldn't have been able to afford a phone. Problem? It's a scam. The website crashed on the first day due to traffic, and the whole thing was a mess, but they still managed to sell phones to tens of thousands of customers, and hardly any of them would get one. The company claims they delivered 5,000 units by the July of 2016, and that they would be delivering another 65,000 units shortly after. Well, that never happened. The whole thing was a confusing mess, but it made a big splash in tech media at the time, as everyone was wondering how on earth this phone could cost less than $4. And it turns out it can't, clearly. The company has just kind of pretended it never happened since then, and the website domain is now owned by someone completely different who turned it into a tech blog. I think the real pity in all this is not just the phone not being delivered, but the false hope it no doubt brought in people thinking maybe, just maybe, they'd finally be able to actually afford a smartphone. The creator of the phone was later arrested by Indian authorities due to fraud allegations, and yeah, I'd say that checks out. So what you got on deck? Skyfall, lean in, then some Pinterest. You? Twitter, Minecraft, and then some Hunger Games. Boom. Oh, you guys are all set, huh? Oh, yeah. New Amazon Fire Phone. It comes with Amazon Prime. Tons of cool stuff for no extra charge. Really? It comes with Amazon Prime? Yeah. There's so much to watch. I've been on this earth nine years. I've never seen anything like it. The new Amazon Fire Phone, with a full year of Prime included. 
exclusively on AT&T. For number six, moving to a much lighter situation, we have a phone I actually did a video on a while back, the Amazon Fire Phone. This is one of the biggest flops in recent tech history, with Jeff Bezos and Amazon pouring millions and millions into it, only for them to end up with an utterly mediocre smartphone that was overpriced and no one bought. When the Fire Phone was announced, it promised to be a legitimate contender to the mammoths of Apple and Android, running a closed version of Android itself with Amazon's own Fire OS. This was the same software that still runs on their tablets today, and while it was even more limited back in 2014. The biggest issue with it is that Amazon had their own Google Play Store type thing, so you had to download Amazon apps, and so of course that means limited third-party support. So why have you likely never heard of this phone? Well, it was full of gimmicks, already had old hardware, was overpriced at $650, although if you bought it on contract, that price would drop to $200, and within two months, AT&T would drop their price to $0.99. Cents. Yikes. Amazon, and more specifically Jeff Bezos, kept pushing to make the Fire Phone more and more ambitious in kind of the most useless ways possible, and it all really screwed up the execution of the Fire Phone. It wasn't long before they went radio silent on the whole thing and never released any newer model. The big gimmick of the Fire Phone was this weird 3D effect. It was kind of cool, but ultimately useless. Reportedly, Amazon dealt with a $170 million loss from the whole ordeal. Definitely qualifies as an absolute disaster in my books, and I'll link my video on it in the description for anyone curious. Number seven. One of the strangest and most hyped gimmicks of the Fire Phone had been the 3D effect. And while it was cool, as said, it was extremely pointless and offered absolutely nothing to the user. Well, Amazon wasn't the only ones to try something like it. In comes the HTC Evo 3D in 2011, released exclusively to the United States and featuring two five megapixel rear cameras that could be used to take 3D photos or video and be viewed on its, uh, let me see if I get this right, audio stereoscopic display without any 3D glasses. Don't forget, these are the days of 3D TVs, where you often would need 3D glasses for viewing, and 3D in general was kind of an extremely overhyped concept. So what went wrong? Surely a strange effect like 3D wasn't enough to completely ruin the phone, right? Heck, it was probably pretty cool. The thing is, is while the 3D effect was kind of cool when you first looked at the phone, that novelty would run out quick, and the shortcomings that came with it would appear even quicker. The camera was poor, the battery life was garbage, the CPU was underpowered, and the 3D display could cause headaches and make you queasy with no way to turn the feature off. The idea of sharing 3D photos was kind of neat, except uh, the people you want to share it with also had to have the Evo 3D, so yeah. It was pointless, and the sacrifices that had to be made to make the phone possible in the first place was just too brutal for people to want to buy it, and HTC scrapped the tech pretty quickly. <laughs> In number eight, we have a classic. Where to begin with the Samsung Galaxy Fold? It made waves with its announcement in March 2019 with a phone that looked like a very tall, thick smartphone folded up. But unfolded, it turned into a decent little tablet. It was very cool, but there was immediate questions about the durability of a device like this, and the price was something that people justifiably balked at at around $2,000. Yeah, $2,000, double what the iPhone 10 cost a couple years beforehand when it caused outrage by hitting the $1,000 mark. So what went wrong? The better question might be, uh, what didn't go wrong? Samsung sent out folds to the media and influencers before the originally planned release date of April 26, and problems quickly arose. There was a light plastic film on the plastic display, and the way it was positioned made it look like one of those things you could peel off a phone when you first get it, or perhaps a basic screen protector. So people started peeling them, only to break the device. Samsung's initial answer to this was, hey, don't remove the film. Come on, guys, work with us. But then it keeps happening. The phone kept breaking in 
other scenarios too, and before Samsung could blink twice, they had a PR nightmare on their hands as the media storm began. But credit to Samsung, they did the right thing, they delayed the launch of the Galaxy Fold and got right to work fixing things. But unfortunately, they couldn't fix the core issues with the prices, and there were still a ton of small things. Like, there wasn't much point of using the phone when it was folded up, there was that pretty annoying crease in the middle of the unfolded screen, and the whole experience was often unoptimized and buggy. The Fold would release the September of 2019, and Samsung would go on to claim they had sold 1 million units by December, but later rolled that back, admitting to have reported sales expectations as the sale numbers. Whoops, total accident, I'm sure. Foldable technology just wasn't ready for consumers, and while many defended Samsung saying that you need to expect problems with any first rendition of an innovative device like this, there were just too many problems. And soon after, Samsung would fix things with a much better Galaxy Z Flip and Galaxy Z Fold 2, both of which would be more durable, premium, and just overall significantly better experiences. Continuing to our second last phone, we have the Red Hydrogen 1, one of the most hyped smartphones among enthusiasts in recent history, and so naturally, it was bound to be a disaster. Red is a very highly respected camera company with some of the best filmography options on the market, so when Red announced they would be making a smartphone, the hype was inevitable. They were also excited to announce their holographic display and a camera capable of recording in a 3D format. Wait a sec, haven't I seen this one before? Hey. Hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. What do you mean you've seen this? It's brand new. Oh well, I'm sure there's no precedence that says 3D on phones is a bad idea, right? What could possibly go wrong? So yeah, after multiple delays, it comes out in late 2018, and pretty quickly the flaws become obvious to reviewers. The screen just straight up wasn't very good. The holographic features caused things to look blurry and just bad most of the time, and when you weren't using the holographic feature, the screen was just normal 2D, which made the whole 3D thing kind of pointless, it felt like, in most tasks. Plus, the 3D wasn't much of 3D, it just added a bit of depth, and it wasn't as eye-popping as Red had hyped it up to be. Holographic has a very futuristic connotation to it. But the most disappointing part of the phone was the camera. It wasn't that it was just bad, it's just how mediocre it was. The 3D photos were weird, and the 12 megapixel sensors just didn't cut it, especially from a company that was known for their fantastic camera technology. It didn't help that the phone looked like it came straight out of 2016. Don't forget the iPhone X came out a year before this phone, but the bezels were as thick as ever. That might be okay, and the design in my eyes was kind of cool, being rugged rugged and industrial, but in reality it's heavy, clunky, and just not a fun experience. Oh, and it was also an experience that would cost you $1,300. That price was soon dropped, but uh, yeah. There was meant to be this whole modular aspect of the phone, and nothing really came of it, because the phone didn't sell well, so they didn't follow through. All in all, Hydrogen won just a huge disappointment. I am delighted we could share in the serenity and joy of this beautiful day as we come together to celebrate the commitment of these Would you mind moving your enormous phone? You mean the enormously awesome galaxy? Search, one trick pony. Aren't you a little young to have an iPhone? You wanna go? I see, copy bots. Auto correct this. <clears throat> Is there an app for that? Search karate. Karate! You think if they knew about the Nokia Lumia, they'd stop fighting all the time? I don't know. I think they kind of like fighting. The Windows Phone Nokia Lumia 920. And Gadget's Reader's Choice Smartphone of the Year. Number 10, last but not least, we don't have just one phone, we have an entire line of phones with Microsoft's infamous Windows Phone. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't not talk about Windows Phone, and I'm sure I'll get some people annoyed with me, as there legitimately were some diehard Windows Phone users, and that's totally fair, but Microsoft just couldn't make the phone sell. And while some of them had really cool features, and the software was often ahead of its time, the majority of Windows Phones were cheap plastic options that would be slow from the get-go. There were some pretty solid 
solid Windows phones. The Lumia 950 XL is actually one I personally have and did a video on it a while back, which I'll link in the description if you're curious. The phone had a lot of potential, but it was marketed and priced as a premium option while still being made of plastic and just not having the premium feel you were paying for. And it's a pity because the Windows software had so much potential. Maybe if Microsoft had been able to convince Google to bring Android apps to the platform, there might have been an actual chance for them to succeed because uh, most app developers didn't feel like making apps for such a small user base on Windows Mobile, and so third-party support was always limited. Microsoft would eventually give up on Windows Phone past 2015, and it would finally stop getting updates at all back in the December of 2019. There might still be some people clinging to their Windows phones, but they've got to be few and far between at this point. It's a true pity, but Apple and Android were able to maintain their chokehold on the smartphone industry, and it's looking unlikely that'll be changing anytime soon. So that's my list of the top 10 worst smartphone disasters. Any phones you think I should have included but didn't? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. There were definitely some I considered, uh, but ultimately I think this is a pretty good list, and some of them are more well-known, like the Note 7 and the Galaxy Fold, but some of them are kind of obscure, like the Kia Sierra Echo. I had never heard of that phone until I started making this video, and uh, it's super cool. I think when it comes to this list, the most common phone people had was the iPhone 5C. I had it myself personally, and it was a great phone. It just wasn't very good in terms of what Apple is used to doing. But yeah, if, if you've had any of these phones, make sure you let me know that too in the comments. That'd be interesting to hear. And thanks so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason, such as keeping up with my future projects and seeing cute pictures of my dog. This was a bit different from my typical content and it was fun. Sorry for the slower uploads lately. I've just got a lot on my plate, but lots of good stuff coming in April. So yeah, make sure you stick around and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.